Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening. Welcome to the Chicken Box, everybody. Hope you're having a great week. Hope you're finding your mental, spiritual, and physical health in a good place, because we're going to talk about something that sometimes I don't think people have ever heard about. I'm your host, Kevin Impeccable Peck, and today's topic is Black people versus holistic healing. Huh. I mean, some people like say what? Anyway, before we get into it, I'm going to get, and I'm representing the Gen Xs. This is a, a multi-generational show. So invite somebody, share with somebody. Dr. Draper, the yes, world sir. traveler, how are you this morning? Afternoon. Not, I am great. It is afternoon in, Bal in Baltimore, Maryland. I have been over um, and around a couple of different places, different time zones, but I am in Maryland. It is afternoon. Welcome everybody to the Chicken Box. I am Francis Tony Draper representing the baby boomers and i like to say i'm a boomer millennial so there you have it well, she has made something new if you just tuned in and we popped up on your thread before we bounce past it to our our future <laughs> misha green welcome welcome to the chicken box this morning how are you i'm doing well i i'm hoping that i'm considered the future that makes me feel good since uh now now, when they're talking about the future generally uh, in popular culture and media, they're talking about Gen Z. So I accept it and claim it. I am always and forever representing for the millennials. Uh, however, I am a millennial boomer. Or is it a boomer? Yes, millennial boomer. I don't know how to do the trans, the, the, the put it together. Uh, and I don't know if I'm, I'm transforming the two. However, I do know I love boomer culture, music, and life. And so, <laughs> though I was born in, oh gosh, in 1991, <laughs> <laughs> I love everything about, um, everything I can learn about uh, the boomers ahead of me and who paved the way for me. <laughs> Absolutely. If you've never heard of a chicken box before, if you're from the Baltimore area or been there, you know it's full of wings and fries. But if you have, if you haven't been there, you gotta try. You gotta add salt and pepper and ketchup on it and get a half and half while you're at it. But this is where we dispel stereotypes, where we uh, take on topics that sometimes are controversial, and we give you a chance to step on the chicken box and speak your truth. Now it might not be my truth, but it could be your truth, and that's where your opinion matters. So make sure you put in the chat as we get into this conversation, black people versus holistic healing. You've heard of a lot of things. And of course, health is at the top and it should always be at the top, but it's at the top of the list, especially during these trying times. We have a special, special guest today. You know, African-Americans are going through uh, all types of different challenges. I'm not saying that everybody isn't, but We've relied on Western medicine for such a long time, and I, I think we've lost a lot of our connection to our roots because we're not relying on any holistic heal. No, I'm not going to say any, but it's not widespread, and I think the information is not out there. We all might have some things that we say we're doing, uh, you know, like, I'm taking this. I'm doing this. I had an apple cider vinegar. I, I, I bite tree bark. Um, I catch bees. Everybody, if you hear them, they are telling you what they are doing to fight off everything that is going on right now. But we have a special guest. He's not only a guest, but he is a part of the Afro family. Uh, Dr. Draper, will you introduce not only the Afro family member expert, but also what cousin is this for you? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll get into that. You, we're gonna bring him up on screen. Here we go. Okay, there he is. All right. Well, I mean, it's really, it's really a pleasure to introduce our, I don't even want to call him a guest for today. Let me, let me share his background this way. And we might have to mute out guys while uh, somebody else is talking because I can hear a little bit of feedback, a little bit of feedback. So I'm going to tell the story. I'm a storyteller. So Dr. Jones, you might have to mute your phone out, your computer, your device out for us as well. Thanks. So I'm, I'm a storyteller. And so our grandparents had five girls and those five girls and their um, spouses produced 16 children. Now, the five girls were stair steps, born one, almost, one right after the other. I think in a five year span, because there's a set of twins 
that's in the that group of five. And so 16 of us and most of us were born within five to seven years of one another. So we came out as stair steps as well. And so our guest, Dr. Leland Jones, his mother and my mother um, were sisters. His mother was one of the twins. And we're in that stair step or half stair step apart. So he's born uh, a year old, a year before I was. But, you know, we all get mixed up. We're all in there. Rachel, you're watching. You're in there someplace too. You keep saying, Rachel keeps wanting to remind us that she's the younger of us. Um, but once you become Medicare eligible, it all runs together. I just want to just say that. And so our guest for this morning, uh, as I said, is one of the 16, very, very unique in his preparation and unique in our connection. I think he and I and one other of the 16, we all had a real keen interest in what makes people work uh, in terms of mentally, physically, holistically. We were very, very interested in psychiatry and those types of things, but he's the one that actually went and did it. He was a physician, is a physician, right? He's he's a physician. He's a, a, um, a, a, a general or an internist, so he'll tell us what he is. He's, he's, he's absolutely that. Um, but along his journey, he had a keen interest. As I said, as young younger people, we had a keen interest in this, in psychiatry. So not only is he a physician, but he is also a psychiatrist. He is also, we're talking about holistic medicine now, holistic healing, holistic living. He's also a minister of the gospel. He is also an author. And maybe I should have said this first. He is a husband, a father, a grandfather. And to me, he's my cousin. So um, we're so glad. Um, oh, and he's Tony with a Y and I'm Tony with an I. So we have a special kinship. Welcome. And his name is, and I said Tony, and people are looking at the screen and saying it doesn't say that, but Lillian is his first name, but we call him Tony, T-O-N-Y. So Tony with a Y, Tony with an I, and just um, a great person. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm about to say, you just dropped them off in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> That's how cousins do, right? That's how cousins do. And he's written a book called Becoming Whole. It's more like a book. Yes, I'm not, actually, I'm writing another book. This this is a, um, Becoming Whole is a textbook. And I'm writing a, I'm, I'm writing a, a more of a workbook, um, a devotional book. It, um, uh, it's uh, very challenging, but it's going to be very... Um, much of a blessing for people. So I'm glad to be here. I just want to say a, a little bit about uh, the wings because this is, we are calling from Buffalo, Buffalo Wings. And um, Buffalo Wings got started. I won't get into that's a whole nother topic. But oh, so it, it went say, all over the world. You say, even though we have the chicken box, you're saying Buffalo started the wing, the whole wing deal. The Buffalo started, that's right. And okay. well, actually, the Buffalo Wings was started. Uh, by a black chef, and then of course, like a lot of things, it was it was stolen uh, into um, various restaurants here in Western New York and Buffalo. But I won't get into that right now. So um, All right. I'm very I'm very honored to be here with uh, with uh, my cousins and um, and to talk about this. This is a subject that's very passionate for me. Uh, this holistic health, especially with um, COVID being here, and so. Um, well, well, well before, before we get into it, to the nitty gritty, I know all of, of of us have something to say about black people and holistic healing. We all have our own stories on this chicken box. So this is our opportunity to get to get personal with the doc. And, you know, what is everybody's thoughts before we start on holistic healing? Throw it in the chat if you're listening, if you know what it is, if you experienced it, if, you, uh, if you're using it. Uh, throw it in the chat uh, as we get started. We're going to sound off. Before we give it to the expert for 30 seconds, just what our thoughts are. Misha, what is the millennial boomer's thoughts on what holistic healing is? Uh, well, first of all, I just want to say thank you, Dr. Jones. It's so good to see you today. And I actually learned a lot about holistic healing recently from Dr. Jones when 
we interviewed him last year. Um, at that time, it was about uh, talking about mental health in the black community. Uh, I think somebody needs to mute because we're having a bit of a feed feedback. Okay, yeah, way better. Um, but, uh, and, and so I, my understanding of holistic healing and holistic health and lifestyles has sort of expanded. Initially, my understanding of holistic health and healing uh, came from a lens of using herbs uh, to heal the body and to work as preventatives for the body. And uh, as a true millennial boomer, I am famous for, for doing that. I like use black seed oil, elderberry syrup, uh, echinacea, garlic, all of those things I take regularly sort of as preventatives. And so I thought more of the the lack of use of Western medicine as holistic healing. And then as uh, someone who grew up in the church, as a preacher's kid, PK, I definitely consider the religious aspect of holistic healing and then treating the, the mental aspect as well and ensuring that uh, one's mental health is up to par. But really, I didn't understand the correlation in, of combining those three and or four things together in order to sort of to truly be whole and healthy and to consider if one thing is off that it could possibly affect the physical and, and other. And so um, I'm really excited about this conversation. I, I definitely uplift and emphasize the importance of physical health. You guys know I'm really into that as well as like I said, uh, sort of straying away from Western medicine uh, regularly, but uh, in in the day and age that we're in, I have a lot of questions because I I know um, that, the, for example, with the vaccine and things like that, um, that sort of is not not what we generally consider holistic living, um, but. Can I still live a holistic lifestyle and take a vaccine? Those are some of the questions I have today. Well, you took my 30 seconds. Welcome to the chicken box. <laughs> I, I wanted to let you vent for a minute and, and get out everything that was going on in your mind. If you I, I got to be transparent, y'all. I'm taking the vaccine today and I am <laughs> terrified. So that's, oh. <laughs> that is oh, why. Okay. I knew it was something because, you know. We're going to get in. We're going to get into that. We're going to give you a virtual handhold and a hug in a minute to, and, and, a, and some prayers to make it through. But if you just tuned in, we're talking about black people versus holistic healing. Have you heard of it? Have you have you experienced it? What is your idea of holistic healing or is this a new concept to you? We have an expert, Dr. Leland Jones, on the line today. And, Doc, I wanted to get uh, I, I hope you don't mind the Dr. Draper, because I think you black guys both being uh you know in the ministry you kind of understand it already <clears throat> but i wanted to get it from our expert uh i know he is uh moving and and doing all sorts of things so i wanted to just have him get the conversation started today if that's all right dr jones which tony did you are you looking for oh i forgot y'all are both doctors but i said jones i thought at the end <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, you ready for me now? We're ready. Okay. Um, well, I'm very honored to talk about holistic health, especially with COVID and especially about black people because this is my passion uh, because uh, we, are, we are whole people. And unfortunately, we live in a culture that treats people in fractions and parts. Uh, so you go to this doctor for this part, you go to this doctor for that part, and, and some people don't go to doctors and, um, uh, and so some people don't even um, believe in whole health. Some people just wait till you get sick. That's when you go to a doctor. Wait till you go to the hospital. I, I used to be an emergency room doctor, and that was um, that was that's a very common place for African Americans to go when they get sick. They just they don't have a doctor. They just wait till they get real, real, real sick, and then they go to the emergency room. So you see people like that on a regular basis, like how you do. <laughs> they, don't, they don't believe in doctors, and you know there's a lot of reasons for that. So um, the idea of treating the whole person uh, is huge. And, and um, like, like Misha said, you know, it's preventative. See, the, be the, best, the best cure is not getting sick in the first place. And, and the Bible just replete with all kinds of things that are preventing 
illness. So you don't get sick. You don't want to have to. You don't want to have to get sick. Uh, ideally, uh, some people say, "Well, how are you going to die if you don't get sick?" Well, some people just close their eyes and go on away from out of here. Just like it's like Moses and people in the Bible. It's like, okay, okay, guys, it's my time to go. Okay, you don't have to get sick to die. So, but anyway, um, so we almost look at sickness as a friend. But the holistic approach um, is is really an African approach. Uh, you mentioned some of the herbs and some of the things you're using to prevent uh, COVID or for, prevent viruses. Um, and uh, I know in my as a as a family doctor, I'd have patients come for years, and I, I got the flu. I'm getting the flu. Um, I worked. I worked in a walk-in clinic in Charlotte one time, and and patients would come into the walk-in clinic and they say, "Well, I'm, I'm going to um, I'm going to fly to you to Europe, and so I just want to get a penicillin shot, or I got a sore throat. Can I get a penicillin shot?" You know, I'm like, "Wait a minute. Ninety percent of sore throats are viruses, so it's not going to do you any good." Well, I get a, get a shot in about two days, I feel better. Well, it's a forty-eight hour virus, <laughs> so you know, so we were we sort of have the idea that. Um, uh, we, we have an idea that we really don't understand what illness is about, what disease is about. And so holistic practice is and, and ministry is has a lot of different integrative medicine, functional medicine. And so you see a lot of doctors, medical doctors that are using, in fact, I got a thing right here in the mail just uh, yesterday. Here's um, lifestyle medicine put out by Harvard, Harvard and Johns Hopkins. In other words, how to do, how to do breathing, how to do how to do um, yoga, how to do meditation in Harvard? Are you kidding me? In other words, this has always been medication. You're a, you're a medical doctor. So now medical doctors are realizing that, look, uh, we need to understand what these other things are about. Patients come to you and say, well, doc, I'm using X, Y, and Z. And the doctor's like, I have no idea what that is. We didn't study that. Like, we didn't even study nutrition in medical school. So now that's being given now. <clears throat> what foods do you use? Let food be your medicine and let medicine be your food. What foods do you use to to treat various things? In fact, one, one way I'd like to look at it is uh, what is um, uh, what is the best protein on the planet? What is the best carbohydrate? What is the best fat on the planet? Then, and what are the best ones for you? And then you adapt and you make those things ta tasty. You make those things appealing uh, as much as you can, as opposed to the other way around. Let me let me eat what I like and try to throw a couple of vitamins in. I put in, and, and so I'm eating this junk food that's destroying my body, and then I want to be healthy. I remember at, at our church picnics, um, because they heard me preaching on this so long. The church picnics, we had so many things that people would come from other churches and other places, and they're like, "Oh my God, this is so healthy." We never seen anything like this. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why you see so many black people dying so quickly and dying so quickly with uh, COVID. Uh, that's one of the reasons is because of our diet. Our diet is so poor. Uh, I'm not to say it's a, it's a slave diet, but um, it's not it's not very healthy in general. Absolutely. So you see a lot of you see a lot of high blood pressure. You see a lot of diabetes. Mm. You see a, you see a lot of um, uh, hyperlipidemia, uh, what's called syndrome X, uh, insulin resistance. And I don't want to get too technical, but basically, basically the insulin doesn't work. Your insulin is not working. Um, and so now the doctor is going to give you medicine to um, give you more. So your insulin works better, but we the best thing to do. See, when you go to the doctor, you should say, "Well, doctor, how how can can I can I get this diabetes cured? How long will it take to get it cured? I have high blood pressure. How 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 can you can you get this cured? I don't want this anymore." Most of the time, we don't say that. We don't think that. Well, I'm going to give you this pill for this condition, which it helps, and we have scientific studies to prove it helps. But we don't tend to say. Um, like if we if we were to take African Americans and take them to Africa, and eat, let them eat an African diet, their blood pressure would go away, their diabetes would go away, they lose weight, and you know they're they're living in a poor lifestyle, and and all these all these chronic conditions would go away. You know, cancer is sort of a new thing. They come back to America, eat American food, and the blood pressure goes back up, diabetes goes back up, all these things go back up. Why? <laughs> 
because well, we're <laughs> that's the question, y'all. Why? Okay, and and that's the question why we're talking about black people versus holistic healing. And it is a lot of stereotypes, Dr. Jones, out in the marketplace. And uh Misha is on we she used to be on the regular streets, but now that it's COVID, she's on these digital streets out here finding out actually what is going on uh in the mind of what we think not everybody but what what you've heard stereotypes uh misha have you heard any stereotypes first of before i before i put my foot in my mouth yes i've heard so many uh dr jones and i laughed at a, at a, at a couple of them last june when i interviewed him but um, you know, what's unfortunate is that some of these are, are, are still very much so pre prevailing and, and continuing, um, even as we've attempted to continue working to dispel some of these stereotypes. Um, but I think on, on the other side, side of it, um, you know, it's just, it, it, it's quite interesting to see how we're thinking because so much of it, I think, comes from, again, a place of, uh, you know, misinformation, a lot of concern and mistrust, um, and then just representation. So it's really refreshing to have someone like Dr. Jones, who is professional, articulate, well-spoken, uh, and can really help us uh, first, it can really truly be a representation for those who may not be truly understanding what, what holistic healing is. And uh, I, as you'll hear on these digital streets, a lot of people, I think, have an idea of holistic health that might not necessarily be exactly what we're talking about today. Um, so again, these are solely stereotypes, not necessarily views endorsed by the Afro. Uh, the first is holistic healing is a thing of the past. Holistic healing is actually super in now, but only a fad and passing trend. Holistic healing is growing because of immune boosting concerns due to the pandemic. Holistic lifestyles are associated with people with more hippie lifestyles. Um, holistic, holistic lifestyles can be expensive. Holistic lifestyles can be too convoluted, convoluted and takes too much work. Holistic lifestyles promote overall wellness. Holistic lifestyles will help fight COVID-19. Black people are meant to live holistic lifestyles. It's contradictory to live holistically and get vaccines. Uh, if the people around you aren't living holistically, it's hard to keep it up. And holistic healing goes against much of current and previous Black culture. Wow, that's an extensive list of stereotypes. Dr. Jones, have you heard any of these before? No, we're gonna talk about all these. This is really no, no. We're not talking about all of them, but, but <laughs> whatever ones that we can get in that people are, are mm -hmm. chiming in, and that we're seeing people saying, "I'm glad this conversation is happening." What's taking it so long? Uh, uh, no vaccine for me. Um, our food, we love soul food. Uh, we inherited diabetes because of the sugar cane. Mm. Uh, it's a lot of thoughts out there about what's going on with your health. I have my own personal, but I'll save it to the end because the good doctor is on here. So let, let's get into some of these stereotypes, Doc. Well, look, you know, first of all, I'm going back to the point about um, at Harvard and at Johns Hopkins, you know, um, one of the people I'd recommend because I have to be careful giving, med giving advice on the internet, but uh, functional medicine is one of the ones I'd really recommend. So not just give you an example, if you have a problem uh, whatever medical problem it is, uh, or prevention, look up functional medicine and then the problem. So you look up, sort of say, diabetes and functional medicine, or functional medicine and diabetes, and you will get. So you you know because the, the Google has so much stuff out there that um, that's not really helpful. But anyway, so check out functional. In fact, the um, the head of the Cleveland Clinic, the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, is the number one hospital in the world for, for heart surgery. Not Harvard or, or Johns Hopkins, or, but Cleveland Clinic. And the head of the Cleveland Clinic said the future of medicine is functional medicine. Now he said that like last year, a few years ago, because he sees that people that go to functional medicine don't need heart, heart, heart they don't need a, a artery, a new coronary artery that prevents that. See, so the thing is, 
this medical industrial complex is so huge, it's not something that you can turn off and give people the best. See, so functional medicine is the medicine, okay, what is really wrong with you? What's really going on? In fact, they do have a whole section just for African American, which is really good because they know a lot of a lot of black folks, well, a lot of black folks live in Cleveland, but people come from all over the country, have this mindset. Well, so if you're like, well, do you want to get pills for your blood pressure? Or do you want to get rid of your blood pressure? I was in I was in the barbershop one, one day, this was several, several years ago. And the guys, and then they knew I was a doctor, so they started talking about high blood pressure. And they're like, well, you know, we don't like this blood pressure medicine because it causes this side effect. And you know what side effect that is, men? It, it causes a potency side effect. So I got a, I got a choice, have high blood pressure and get a stroke or have a good sex life. And so what do you got to say about that, doc? <laughs> it's like these guys, they're just breaking it down. Look, look, this is where I live. This is, this is where it's all about. I don't like this medicine. It lowers all kind of blood pressure. So, um, but there's a whole nother way to treat these things. There, so that's what I like about functional medicine because they're including this. See, so actually it's easy to treat high blood pressure. It's easy to get rid of diabetes. These things are easy to treat. The thing is you have to sort of reprogram the person's mind and say, you know, do you have these alternatives? These are things are out there. See, so as a, as a holistic doctor, I'm, I'm like, okay, which ones are best for you? Which ones are will you accept? Because there are a lot of things that we could do you know, you know, I could give you African medicine, Chinese medicine. I could give you, you know, holistic medicine or just pray and cast the demons out of you. And I mean, you, that's some really amazing. You cast the demons out, people get better. It's amazing what that does for people. So, you know, so you really are uh, uh, tailor making uh, the treatment according to where that person is or where that what that person can afford or what that person will eat. Because um, like like was brought up already that um let food be your medicine. Uh, well, this is this is this. Is, our family grew up on this food, and these and these. You know, I was I was a family doctor in, in North Carolina, and one of the things I did, I would say, you know, so see a lot of black folks put salt on everything, and I'm like, you got all these herbs, you have all these herbs. Why don't you use more herbs instead of salt? Oh, learn how to grow these herbs. Learn how to use these herbs. And so they would you they would come in, they would use all these different types of herbs and they got the spice and they got the hot sauce, they got all these things. And their blood pressure would come down because they wouldn't have to use salt shaker. It's almost like oh, I'll just put that on everything. So you know so there are a lot of there's a lot of easy things that we can use so that we are you can sort of eat the same food. Uh, there's a keto diet that that maximizes fat. You want you want fat? You can have all the fat you want. In fact, you almost can't get enough fat on the keto diet, which is a very good diet for weight loss. So, um, the, so the, going back to the holistic approach, uh, it's um, much more looking at the whole person and it's much more looking at what is the cause of your illness, not just the symptoms. There's the fruit, but there's the root. There's the fruit of your illness that we would tend to, oh, you got these symptoms, you got headaches, you got backaches, you got, but where is the cause? Where is that coming from? And if you can lay the ax to the root of the tree, then the whole tree can fall over and you don't have to treat all these symptoms. Absolutely. If you just tuned in and wonder what we're talking about, it is black people versus holistic healing. We are putting that idea into uh, into your mindset at this moment is that you can actually move for preventing instead of just being treated, which a lot of pharmaceutical companies will prefer that you would be just treated for 20 and 30 years until you injure your stay here on earth opposed to preventing. I've, I've even heard that they love our animals and dogs more than people because they have find these ways to prevent it in animals. <laughs> but when it comes to us, they're not gonna take those same measures. Uh, and uh, we're discovering that uh, a lot of you guys use nutrients and, and things and have heard different things. And, and you know, Doc, I, I'm glad you bring up the diabetes because people will speak on it all the time. Yeah, I have diabetes. They keep it then, you know, it's type two. And but it it is a lot of information out there that can clearly uh clear that up with just a change in your diet and adding some nutrients and different supplements in in there. It's a lot of resources out there. Thank you for bringing that up, Dr. Draper. Um I'm going to bounce pass it to you just for a second. Uh, everybody, thank you for tuning in. This is a conversation that you want to do. We want to get into preventing 
finding out ways that can really heal us holistically as well as using natural resources that God has already made. Um, uh, Andre Draper, okay, Dr. Jones, here's a question. All right, before we get in, is it true that the moment you close your eyes, the healing process begins? Well, certainly sleep is a, is is very healthy. We we're just talking about that uh, with Mr. Impeccable here about his sleep pattern. <clears throat> yeah, so sleeping is very healthy, but your body's working on healing itself 24 um, seven. It's repairing cells and it's destroying. There's millions, millions and millions of cells that have to be repaired or, or, or that are broken down and sort of eaten up and sort of replaced. This is going on all the time. And so, yes, so sleep is, is a time where, you know, the repair uh, increases because now we have a chance to rest uh, our bodies and hopefully rest our mouths so that we can um, um, sort of re re be renewed. That can help some marriages too, guys, if you rest your mouth sometimes. Anyway, <laughs> let's, Dr. J, I'm sorry. Uh, what, did, did, did you want to add something to the conversation? I don't know if I can add much to it. It's a fascinating conversation. Uh, I, I think I have a couple of questions around. Sometimes people get in such a pattern, as you said, Dr. Jones, with the traditional treatments, right? The doctor prescribed pills. Is it ever too late to reverse that course? I mean, how does that work? And we talked already about the African root of that. I mean, I went to Africa and ate what they ate and I was sick for like two, two days. My body was, I guess, reacting to all the junk that was in there as opposed to, you know, what they were eating. That's another whole story. But uh, what, what would you say to people who you said, you know, 30 years on the pill or 40 years or 20 years or whatever. What, what's the best way to reverse that? And is it a detox kind of um, regimen that people go through if they're already on medication? Well, you know, I think we, we brought this up a little bit earlier that um, a lot of doctors are not trained in uh, holistic medicine. So um, if you go to them and say, can I eat this rather than taking these pills? Of course, he's gonna say, well, you know, I don't, I don't recommend that. So I think one of the things that you have to do is educate yourself. You wanna understand yourself what's going on because um, he's probably not gonna say too much. Now, he, may, he may say some things about, for instance, your diet, that these are certain foods you need to avoid. But if you become an expert, you wanna become an expert in yourself, especially in the condition. So if you have high blood pressure, you wanna be an expert on that. Uh, like I said, don't give give you some websites. And I, let me give you three names, three names of people that I really would recommend so that you can become an expert very quickly. And um, one I mentioned was at the Cleveland Clinic, Mark Hyman, H Y M A N, Mark uh, Hyman. Um, and if you even just type in Mark Hyman, and 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 he has all these free blogs, all this stuff is free. <laughs> the thing is, uh, now medicine. Is recommending yes. Now, see that we don't want to. We don't want to. In fact, if you went to the Cleveland Clinic, they will say, "What well, do you want? Functional medicine or you want the traditional medicine?" See, they don't really. They're not really advertised. There's a lot of. There's a lot of healing that's not advertised. We don't talk about it because, for a lot of reasons. But so, I, so I would say, okay, Mark Hyman would be one. Eric Berg is another one. B E R G. And he has a number of different um, uh, blogs, and he's on YouTube and Facebook and. And just all kinds of subjects. And Dr. Mercola is another one, um, M-E-R-C-O-L-A. Uh, now, he, he may be a little bit more controversial, but um, you know the, the idea that uh, you want to be an expert. Because a lot of these things, uh, for instance, if you see somebody, for instance, who is 300 pounds, 270, most likely have diabetes. The vast majority, we don't, they don't tell you that. Okay, but um, type two diabetes, uh, insulin resistance, somebody gets up to 250, a woman that's 250, 220, two, she most likely has 90% of the time she's got, she's got diabetes, type two diabetes. And same thing with men. And they get, so they got diabetes, they got high blood pressure, all these things work together. So you're not, you know, the thing about insulin, let me say this about insulin. Insulin is a gatekeeper. It, let, it opens the gate and lets food go in to be metabolized. So when the gate is closed, food can't go in. And so it goes to other places to be stored, like fat and various other things. 
Um, and this idea of the gates being open is huge. In fact, in my book, um, uh, there's a huge spiritual aspect of the gate. You know, I, I, I knock on the gates. Can I come in? It's like the Lord. Can I knock on the gate of your heart and come in? No, we, 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 don't, we don't trust anybody. here. You see, so it's hard to get people to open the gates. Why, why, would, any, why would anybody trust, uh, you know, um, trust us? Why would anybody trust the Afro? Why would, you know, people, well, you know, people don't, you know, for a lot of different, the gate is closed. See, so how do we get that gate open? Because there are, it's just a wealth of information out there. So I would focus on uh, taking care of yourself, focus on cure, not just um, uh, what pill do I take? How do I cure this? And it, as Misha said, how do I prevent it? I don't want to get this. I see this runs in my family. I see this runs in the neighborhood. I see this. How do I avoid this completely? It's a different mindset as opposed to wait till I get sick, wait till I get infirm. I just got off the phone with another patient. She's got several, and I'm, and I'm telling her several things that she can do that are natural. She said, my pills are not working. Well, I could, get, I could write you a prescription, but <laughs> like I say, cut out, the, cut, cut out that hog head cheese and you'll be a lot better. Absolutely. When you know better, you do better. That's what Dr. Draper used to always tell me. And we got to get the information and you have to want the information and you have to, you have to, you know, know that it's not just one way to, to, to live. And so the gate has to, to be open for us to come in. This is black people versus uh, holistic healing. And one of the biggest things, and because the hour is running and the time is running, I don't want to overlook this, but COVID-19, okay. How are we dealing with it from a holistic way of of keeping our bodies and the, like Misha said earlier, that she is taking the vaccine, she has chosen to take the vaccine today. And, you know, is that a contradictory style or uh, mindset based on the holistic approach as we try to contain this vaccine? So I think a lot of people are May, some people made their mind up that they're not going to do it. Some people made their mind up that they are that they are going to do it. And I just wanted to feel feel what's been coming across your desk uh, during these times, Doc. Well, there, there's another group that says um, I won't do it unless I'm forced to do it. <laughs> right. That was, that, I, left that, I left that one out. <laughs> those are three big areas. So. Um, uh, you know, as far as African Americans, we have such a history of being uh, used as guinea pigs, and and uh, people know that, and people um, and, and are treated differently for so many in so many different areas. I won't even get into that because that's really a whole nother subject. But those things are true. There's a lot of uh, racism, and interestingly enough, there are a number of uh, medical schools. Um, in fact, we had some people that came from Maryland to give a seminar to. Uh, to one of our organizations I belong to, CMDA, Christian Medical Dental Association, on racism in healthcare. And so now this is the big thing, because doctors see that um, that this is huge as far as um, their patients, and um, and they're not really doing anything about it. Uh, let me just say, when I was in medical school um, back in the 70s, uh, one of the subjects we had to take was psychiatry. And I, you know, we were the first black group at, uh, in Buffalo, University of Buffalo, more, you know, I think five have graduated in, in 100 years. And so we had about five in our class. And I said, you know, you guys don't know how to teach psychiatry. We want to go to Howard University. And so three of us went to Howard for the month to do our psychiatry residency because we wanted a, we wanted a more holistic approach. We, we wanted another approach to treating psychiatry for Blacks or African-Americans. Going back to the COVID, um, so this is another thing. Be educated. Find out now. So if you're if you're very infirm and you have a lot of illnesses, and um, uh, you're in a nursing home and you you have high blood pressure, diabetes, you know the mortality is going to be much higher for somebody who has uh, comorbidities. Uh, so those people, I would certainly def definitely say yes. You need to you need to take that because you see people are dying off so quickly because they don't have time to get themselves healthy. They're already unhealthy. Most of them don't have a good relationship with their doctors. They don't, they don't, they're not up on their, their uh, various um, supplements. 
So yes, in that case, yes, I would definitely say yes. Then you have the people who um, just don't want to take it for political or social or spiritual reasons. That's a whole nother subject. Uh, but then you have those that want to take supplements, that want to take uh, healthy things. And there are just a whole host of healthy things. I gave you these three names. Um, uh, one of them, one of the easy ones is vitamin D. And black people are really notoriously low in vitamin D. In fact, they say the darker your skin, the more vitamin D you need. Now, see, we don't talk about this too much. We need to, the Afro needs to talk more about uh, this kind of holistic health for African Americans. See, so we need more vitamin D. So one of the things, the doses, some of the doses of vitamin D that are used for COVID, for even just being exposed, are massive. They're massive. It's like, oh my God. Um, but Give us an you, example of what mass is it? What would a massive dose of vitamin D be? Doc? So so let's say, let's say ordinarily you need to be taking about two thousand to three thousand or four thousand international units a day during the winter until spring comes, two, three, or four thousand. You're not gonna get that in a multivitamin. Okay, and so like I said, that black people need more. And for and I'm not gonna get into what what the what the cancers come because we don't get that. But anyway, so the dose for for low for you getting if you're getting COVID, it's like let's say 10 times that. But you're doing it for a short period of time because the, it, it builds up your immunity. Um, so that's one of the things. Vitamin D is huge. In fact, if you can't get vitamin D, even to sit in the sunshine. Here in Buffalo, when the sun is on the on the on the on the eastern side of the house, we don't really run on that side of the house, <laughs> put my shirt off and get some sunshine. We don't get a lot of sunshine here. So another thing that's really big as far as supplements um, would be, um, I know a lot of people like el elderberry um, extract, which has been commonly used for viruses, which is very good. Another one that's very good is a zinc lozenges. In fact, there's a there are doses of building up your zinc so that you're more immune to it. But for years, if somebody comes in with a sore throat, one of the first things I'd give them is zinc. Get to take zinc clauses. Zinc kills the virus in your throat. So is Zycam, Doctor Jones, is is that Zycam? Is that like one of the options? Okay, you know, actually, I was just reading an article about that, and they really said those are one of the things they don't recommend. Okay, uh, I, I stopped it. That's why I asked. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just reading, you know, so one of the things one of the things about the, the the virus is that the fever helps kill off the virus. And so if you've got a mild temperature, you don't want to take a lot of Motrin and aspirin and bring your temperature down because you need now if the temperature is very high, 103, 102 and a half, then you need, we want to bring it down. Uh, you know, take, you know, put tepid uh, towels or or whatever. But Ordinarily, you want to avoid those things because um, they have side effects also. They're hard on the liver. Um, another one, in, a commonly used one, is vitamin C. Um, and in fact, they even give an IV vitamin C. See, so as you check out these websites, you're going to see a lot of things that are used for people that get COVID. And then there are things that you do so you prevent COVID. So, so, the, so if you get it, your body will... If you, if you get a blood test, your body will show that you had it, but you just, <coughs> that was your symptoms. And we know for years, one person gets a, <coughs> another person dies. Why is this good? <coughs> and this one dies. What's the difference? You know, as a doctor, you're like, wow, this is something. Both have got the same disease. So there are a number of different things that I will check that out. And so that you become an expert in yourself. Uh, another one, um, I'm looking at a list here, is spirulina. When we were in Africa, there was a guy who was working on his PhD in, on spirulina. And I was really impressed with this. Now, spirulina is a blue-green algae that grows on the surface of tropical lakes. And it's probably one of the most um, healthy proteins on the planet. Spirulina and Corellia are huge. And so I take it every day. You take a little bit, a little bit, but it comes in a powder, a capsule, put it in your juice. It's the, and, so, and so it's the most healthy protein. So you can throw it in stuff and like, listen, um, we mentioned juicing. I talked about juicing. Ju I'm really big on juicing. Uh, the, I go back to the juice man, and now that we got blenders, you don't even have to juice things. So the, the healthier you are, the more you fight it off. Okay. Put put I, I know you guys, put, put, it, put something in the chat if you're taking some something that is uh, uh, some supplement that is really helping you uh, 
uh, make it through or that put put what you've been doing to keep yourself and to keep your your health up uh, in the chat. We thank everybody who's listening and the information has is so powerful. We we winding down to the next fourteen minutes. Can, can I just can I jump in here? Jump in, let me just say a couple absolutely, minutes. man. No, I'm just saying this is a conversation that we're going to continue. This won't be the only day that we, Doctor Jones, since you are family and part of the Afro family, we're going to just have to make a regular where you stop through and and really share some information. Go right ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So your thought. One of the things that um, I've really been impressed with is this invermectin. I don't know if you've heard of that, but um, there are some studies on Invermectin. This stuff is like it's like a cure. People take this; they don't have to go to the emergency room. How do you spell um, it? And it's a prescription. Right. Um, How do you spell it? Somebody wants to know. Invermectin. <laughs> I V E R M E C T I N. I V E R M E C T I N. And it really it's been used for many years. Like I don't know, like. Uh, 30, 40 years for worms in Africa. But now they notice that it kills, even low doses, kills the um, COVID virus. Uh, mm. another, one, another thing that really is, I've been very impressed with is um, a nebulizers. So this is when people are starting to get the infection, you're starting to get the cough, like should I go to the emergency room and starting to get, and so a neb a desk, especially a desktop nebulizer, and you even put a mask on it. And so the nebulizer you would put, there's, um, in fact, um, you look up Dr. Mercola, he has a whole regimen, uh, uh, several places on his website on um, putting hydrogen peroxide in the water. It's a very small amount of hydrogen. And so hydrogen peroxide is huge. It's used for a lot of them. A lot of people just use it to whiten their teeth. But um, just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and he has a whole, uh, and you make a little saline solution and you inhale this. So it breaks up the mucus, and so you don't get, see the, see the um, COVID basically causes a viral pneumonia. And then it causes a, a storm. So the body puts out all of this infl inflammatory fighters. And see, so that's really the, the, the storm is what really kills people. It's like you're, getting, you're, overly, you're overly reacting. So the immune system can be too low and then we're getting sick and now we're doing things and immune system can be too high. And so we're dying from too much of a good thing. See, so the things I'm telling you right now, see, we, we these things need to be easily understood by everybody. So these are the things you do to not get sick. These are the things if you start to get sick, these are the things you do if you're very sick, and these where you go to the emergency room. So most of these people don't need to go to the emergency room. That's a very, a very small amount if we do what's right. And so the COVID, I give, I'll give a seminar a while ago on, on the purpose of the pandemic. Uh, and so one of the things of the purpose of the pandemic, I believe, is to wake us up. Uh, you know, so we can't do the things we used to do. See, so now God is saying to us, listen, it's time for the church to wake up. People are going to be coming to us because they're like, look, I don't have any answers. Out here. We're really jacked up, toe up from the flow up. And so we're going to need to be able to help people as they come. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Drop the mic on us. Welcome mm -hmm. to Black People versus Holistic Healing, y'all. It is a lot going on. We have um, Seda says she does elderberry and sea moss. Rachel says goalie. Um, people are putting in the chat uh, food grade hydrogen, uh, fresh ginger and turmeric tea, and ashwanda. I might be, I might, uh, I might be uh, pronouncing that wrong. But that's my first time seeing that word, but. I'm going to go. Very good. That's, that's especially very good for, um, for 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 stress, anxiety, and tension because you know we get, the cortisol goes too high and it sort of brings the cortisol down. So it's a very it's not sort of a relaxing, but it's like overall health. I'm gonna spin for one second because this is the Afro American Newspapers channel. Thank you for tuning in on Facebook. If you did, we've been around for 128 years, and we usually have a fact because our archives have so many things that correlate the same time as the week. So. I know we're on this holistic move, but if you could take one minute and give us the Afro fact, Misha, I don't like to miss it. I love the fact. I look forward to the fact, and then we'll get back to our final thoughts on this 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 topic that will continue, and the Afro will lead the way with the information as we move forward, and as you move forward in the decision you make, not only to treat yourself better, but to, to really uh, help fight this current battle that we're all in. Misha? Yes, thank you. 
Uh, and again, I just want to thank Dr. Jones. This has been such an engaging conversation. And I think all of you guys who are watching and tuning in, remember, share, 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 sharing is caring. And uh, as we pivot for a second to the Afro fact, I love that you guys have been so engaged on the uh, holistic healing topic. I want to know how engaged you guys can be on this Afro fact. Should we bring it back? Listen closely. This was quite interesting that the Afro did this. This week's Afro fact is inspired by March 5th, 1932. That was our edition. And the headline said, percentage of colored votes drops two points. Negro gets 54% of the ballot. So when I was reading this initially, I thought this had to do with some special election that happened until I was able to zoom on in into the archives. And in this article, the Afro was doing a ballot looking to settle the best race designation, for example, Negro, Black, colored, or Afro-American. Fun fact, at that time, Negro was the preferred term with more than 460 votes, or about 460 votes. Uh, and then colored had 316 votes. Then far behind in third place was Afro-American with 43 votes. Uh, and ironically, the term we use most now, black, got only two votes in 1932. So I want you guys to tell us in the comments what you identify as if you are a black American. Uh, and in 2021, is it worth bringing back this poll? And that's this week's Afro fact. Wow. Wow. Bring back the poll, I say. Bring it back. Listen, um, Misha, you, you almost, you're taking us into a whole new chicken box. I think we're going to have to do a whole chicken box on colored African American, black, and what was the, the fourth one? Okay, so it was colored in order, it was Negro. Negro, right. Colored, Afro American, and black, I mean, was so low. Like, I think it was number two. There were even things over that in, in the article that I didn't mention, like uh, Ethio American, which was all black people were just going to be basically, you know, <laughs> Ethio American was one. I think six people prefer to just be called American. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely want want to bring back this poll. I'm seeing people already throwing it in the comments uh, to bring it back. Jewel says Black American. That's what I say too, Jewel. Uh, but I, I'm interested to see. I, I had no clue that Negro would be the preferred. Um, I you know, again, I just I when I read the article, it totally went left for me. <laughs> But I, I definitely think it's worth bringing back this poll. Absolutely, we got we're, the hour is approaching. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what part of the world you're in. We are going to get on the box right now to speak our truth about holistic healing, and we're gonna let we're gonna wrap it up with uh, in a bow with Dr. Jones at the end. So, Dr. Draper, I'm gonna go to you first. Uh, final words, you're on the box. So my final word, first of all, thank you, Tony, um, Dr. Jones, for being with us today. We heard you last week or week before last on our Black Business Matters Expo workshop. Excellent job. A lot of us don't know about holistic um, healing, and it's great to hear you talk about it. I do want to put a plug in. In two weeks, the Afro is publishing an edition. The entire edition is on healing, every single page. And so, Dr. Jones, I'm, I don't know, Misha, we probably need an article from Dr. Jones, at least a Q&A of some kind, so we can include that information there. So every single page in two weeks will be on African-American health and wholeness. And so it is really important for us to do that. And it's mind, body, spirit. Um, Dr. Jones didn't have time today to tell us about our inner child that needs healing as well, which contributes to a lot of our illness when our, inner, when our inner child is wounded and sick. But thank you so much for being on the box. Um, come back again soon. Or, you know, record some things. We can drop some gems in every week. We can have a word from, from Dr. Jones on holistic healing. Thanks for being on the box. All right, Misha Green. I just have to echo Dr. Draper in 
thanking Dr. Jones uh, immensely. I always learn so much from you. And uh, since our publisher went ahead and said it, yes, you are recruited, Dr. Jones. We would love if you can uh, contribute a piece for our next edition on health. While we're talking about it, also, we need you all out there to share your health stories. Please, if you have a health story, whether it's about holistic healing, COVID-19, how you might be getting back into shape, mental health, whatever you want to talk about, share it with us. Send it to editor at afro.com. Doesn't have to be a whole lot of words, uh, just your experiences. Uh, we want to know about it and we can definitely include it in this upcoming edition. But the Afro's tradition is that we are a community newspaper and we want to hear from the community and that is you all. So go ahead and send your health stories, how you're remaining healthy during this time or any suggestions or maybe even challenges you've had. Uh, to editor at afro.com. And again, I thank you, Dr. Jones. I really hope that we can have you on more often, but you all can check out an article from Dr. Jones that will be in this coming edition of We're Still Here, talking about health in March. Absolutely. I'm going to get on the box. You guys have been thanking Dr. Jones. I'm going to tell you what I feel about uh, holistic healing, y'all. Listen, I found out some information maybe about six years ago that most of uh, the diseases that we and uh, illnesses uh, were from a nutrient uh, deficiency. And I thought for years I had an allergy problem. I used to take an Allegra D probably every day, especially when the, when the high time, if you're in a high pollen area, found out I had a digestion problem. Right. And so all this time I thought I had an allergy problem. And so. I cut fried foods. I started drinking more water. I I, I got all, uh, I, I let the gluten go for for the most part. And people are here the gluten, but we're not. I'm not getting into it. But all I can say is, I have not taken an Allegra D in five years. So that I'm right with you on the on the holistic healing. Uh, I take nutrients and and different vitamins every day, and I don't get sick. If anybody knows Kevin Impeccable Peck, I do not get sick. And people say. We mean you don't get sick. I said, yeah, because I speak every year that I don't get sick. I used to say I get flu-like symptoms, and I had to stop saying that because then I would get some flu-like symptoms. But my health has been coming out of my mouth for years. Now, when I learned about the nutrients, I put that into practice. And here's the kicker, y'all. I've never taken a flu shot. I've never done anything like that uh, because I don't get sick. But I took the vaccine. My 94-year-old father. Uh, in law got a call in our household to get in the list. And originally I said, nope, because I don't get sick. I'm not going to do it. But then because my my family, my wife did check, took it because she's around her 94 year old dad. And I said, you know, what? I can't I can't let her go out there by herself. So I said, and we, we we're one. If she's going to be out there with it, I'm going to be out there with it. And I've had the second dose and everything as well at the point, but I still stick with, I don't get sick, but for the sake of the community, if in fact we can slow it down, I want to be one of the people to help slow it down. So I'm off the box. Dr. Jones, thank you again for coming. Final words on the box. Um, let me unmute you. Oh, you have to unmute yourself, I think. And then we can, we can wrap it up in a bow for the day. Well, I really appreciate you inviting me. I think, you know, this is a passion for me to get this word out because you see so many people dying uh, needlessly uh, from, from from things that, and suffering needlessly from, from things that uh, you don't have to suffer from. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate you for, um, talking about this. And it's unfortunate that, that COVID has, has pushed us to this point. Um, you, brought, you brought up a very good point about your confession, you know, because your, your confession brings... Your possession, you know, so it's very important to um, for what you say. You have what you say, and that's you know that's a that's a principle that um, that uh, you know, like guess who's listening? Your body's listening. Um, and with Psalm 100, every 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 let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Every cell in your body has breath, and so let your body let your cells praise the Lord. You see, so as we speak over ourselves, as we speak those things, uh, you're going to be healthier just by um, speaking life. Because we, we we speak so much negativity, we speak so much 
you know, how how pitiful we are and how how painful we are. And that that's a, that that's one reality, but there's a higher reality, there's a heavenly reality. So I really appreciate this uh, opportunity to get this word out. Um, so all these folks got a free doctor visit, didn't have to have to pay with insurance or Medicaid, Medicare, and um, at the same time, Jesus heals. That's the bottom line. Boom, that's just, we can drop the mic on that, though. If you believe, we're not saying that everybody's open the gate to say that they believe it, but if in fact that is your thought and you have decided to accept Jesus, he does heal. He's it goes way back. We got some history and some facts, if you believe it, that he did some amazing healing and said that we could do greater things. The question is, do we believe it? Dr. Jones, go visit drlelandjones.com to find out how to connect with him. He is uh, working on his telemedicine uh, credentials, I guess, so that he can help people all over the world, no matter where he is, because he is a not only uh, he's a great resource, uh, not only to the, the world, but to this family. And we thank you in his book, Becoming Whole. Someone asked about that. What's the name of it? Dr. Jones, Becoming Whole. Guys, get the information. Get it on Amazon. And on Amazon, mm -hmm. you can get it right now. Get the information. Spend some money for less than Uber Eats. You can have the book. <laughs> also, you can have an Afro subscription at Afro.com. Dr. Draper? That's what I was going to say. All right. Have a, a membership to Afro.com. Absolutely, because we are not, we can't be bought, y'all. We're going to give you the real information that really helps our community. And then it's no sidetracking. There's no experiments here at the Afro. We're going to give you the information. And what you do with the information is going to be what makes a difference in your life. So until we meet again next Thursday on the Chicken Box, everybody have a wonderful